day, sometime soon, who knows, maybe even this month, Moodle 2 will come out in beta and we can all join in testing it. In the meantime, this video gives you a brief tour of some of the main new features of Moodle 2. One of the first differences is the way you move around in Moodle 2 and the navigation is based on blocks which you can either expand or condense or move across at will by clicking on the icons. Here's the one to get to the courses. If I click here, I can make it into a very thin tab down the left. Clicking the arrow at the bottom will move it across to the right to free up some space. And if I want to expand it or open it up again, I just click on the block as here. If we go into an individual course, we can see how the navigation blocks work in a course. Here we have one, clicking on the arrows down here will open up what's in each individual topic and then according to your permissions, whether you're a student, teacher or administrator, then you have other options which you can open up or condense in the course administration block. Clicking on the arrow next to my profile settings is another way of enabling you to get into your profile to edit aspects of that. Moodle 2 has an improved text or HTML editor, the popular tiny MCE editor, which not only gives you many more options for simply typing in text, but also serves as a doorway, if you like, to enable you to go outside of Moodle to find things such as images. For instance, I'm going to go to Flickr and find an image that I've got on my Flickr site that I want to bring into Moodle. Or likewise, if I click the film strip icon, I can go outside of Moodle and find sound or video files. I've set mine up, for example, to enable me to go to YouTube straight from my Moodle site I'm going to go to YouTube and search for videos of Martin Dugiamas. And then just select the one that I want to link to in my Moodle site. If we now look at the Add a Resource drop down menu, we see that the terms have been simplified. File is what you click on if you want to upload your PowerPoints or your Word documents. Folder is where you want to go if you just want to show a folder of resources. It's the old display a directory which was confusing for some people. The other new word is page which is compose a text page or compose a web page combined and more simply named. And URL is where you go if you simply want to make a link to a website for your students to access. If we click on file to upload a file we see that new tiny MCE editor. We have to click the Add button. That takes us to the so-called File Picker, where selecting Upload a File gives us not only a browse button to go and find our file, but we can also add our name as the author, and in this day and age of copyright, we can choose the kind of license that we want to give when we upload and display that file. If we look at the Add an Activity drop-down menu, one thing worth mentioning while we can see assignments there is that students have the possibility of sending or pushing to other sites such as Mahara or in this instance Google Docs work that they've uploaded to Moodle. I'm logged in as a student. I've done some work on podcasting that I've sent as an assignment. If I click on the button to the right of my work, I can send this also to my Google Docs account. And there it is. Feedback as I understand it won't become core until Moodle 2.1 at least. Quiz has had much work done to it to make it a lot more user friendly. When you get to the quiz editing screen, you quite simply press add a question and then you're given the options of the different types of question and you just click into the circle of the one that you want to make. Press next and you're away. And it's a lot more obvious how to edit your question, change the grade and then add a new question to your quiz. The wiki has had many improvements made to it. I don't have one to show you, I'm sorry, but I have made a screencast on the new revamped workshop, which is on this YouTube channel, All You Need Is Love, which you might like to have a look at. You remember when we looked at the navigation that we now have a lot more control over the location and the appearance of blocks in Moodle 2. One brand new block that's going to be particularly useful is the comments block. So if we add one of those and take a look at it, zoomed in, 
and if we click the configuration icon we can see that not just for the comments block but for all blocks we have so much more control over exactly which page which screen of the course where exactly we want the block to appear do we want it on the right or the left and precisely what level of importance in the list of blocks on either side do we want our particular block to be And of course with the comments block it's going to be very easy to give your opinions pretty much anywhere on Moodle 2. One place where comments will be welcomed are in Moodle blogs and it's now possible to attach a blog entry to a particular course rather than having it on your profile everywhere in Moodle. If you look at this blog entry that's being made now, if we scroll down to the bottom it says associations and we can select to have that blog entry appear only in one particular course. Then when we save the changes we also see that familiar comments link which is going to enable other students on the Moodle course to make comments to this particular user's blog entry. Conditional activities is where teachers set conditions upon students being able to access the work such as they need to have got a particular grade in a previous activity or they need to have read a particular passage before they're allowed to move on. In this instance we don't want the students being able to do the homework April the 10th until they've done the quiz on Moodle 2 in section 1. So we're going to edit this homework and scroll down to an area called restrict availability and set the condition such that they have to have done the quiz on Moodle 2 before they're allowed to access this homework. We can also set it so that before this activity, this homework is available, it is completely hidden from the student's view. So we're going to set it to hide the activity entirely. If we go back to the course page and see what it looks like for the teacher, you see that we have the message that it's greyed out so we know that it's hidden no, not available until the quiz on Moodle 2 is marked complete. How can the quiz be marked complete? How will we know that? Because we have to edit that quiz as well and move to a section called activity completion and the activity is going to be considered complete once the user has received a grade so we're going to set a requirement condition that the user must receive a grade in order for the quiz to be marked to complete in order for the student to be able to access the homework. If you enable progress or completion tracking for your students, they can chart their progress with a couple of ticks, an automatic one once they've completed a certain activity, or one that they can tick or check off manually once they've done a certain task.